Why Europeans are Almost One-Third African, presented by Brett and Scott Pilcher. Modern humans, or Homo sapiens, first evolved on the, on the continent of Africa around 300,000 years ago, as should be common knowledge by now. All people living outside of Africa today descend primarily from a population of Homo sapiens who migrated out between 70 and 55,000 years ago. However, these outcoming migrants would have interbred to a minor extent with hominins whose ancestors had left the continent earlier, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans. However, there is evidence that humans continued to leave Africa after those initial migrations between 70 and 55,000 years ago. Almost one third of modern European ancestry descends from later migrations out of Africa. And here's a graph showing the uh, or I should say map showing the migration, initial migrations out of Africa around 70 to 55,000 years ago. As early as 1997, the geneticist L. Luca Cavelli Sforzo reported that the overall contributions from Asia and Africa to modern European ancestry were estimated to be around two thirds and one third respectively, which is to say about two thirds of European ancestry come from Eurasian populations and one third from African populations. Another interesting recent finding from genetics is that modern East Asians have a higher proportion of their ancestry inherited from Neanderthals than do Europeans, which is very strange because Neanderthals lived in Europe and Southwestern Asia, but not East Asia. East Asia being the area of China, Japan, Singapore, Southeast Asia, and so on. This implies that additional mixture from Africa into Europe after the out of Africa migrations has lowered the proportions of Neanderthal ancestry in Europeans. And another fact, almost 25% of Greek men be belong to the African white chromosomal haplogroup E. Here below is a graph from the blog Ethio Helix showing the proportions of African ancestry in various modern West Eurasian populations. As you can see, the red is the ancestry of, Eur of Eurasian people whose ancestors have migrated out of Africa, and the blue is African ancestry. When did this African ancestry enter Europe? It most likely came from Northeast Africa via the Middle East during the Neolithic period, the time of the earliest farmers in Europe and Western Asia. The, as the physical anthropologist J. Lawrence Angel describes the skeletal remains of Neolithic people in Greece and Macedonia as having some Negroid characteristics that might have come from the Nile Valley in Egypt and Sudan. Another anthropologist, C. Loring Brace, found in 2005 that the Natufians of Levant, who were the ancestors of Neolithic farmers of the Middle East and Europe, have unexpected ties to African populations. Another fact about the Natufians is that according to Ofer Bar Yosef and Graham Baker, their tools are very similar to those made in Northern Africa at the same time, suggesting African influence or even migration. In 2014, geneticist Isaac Lazaridis concluded that Neolithic farmers who brought agriculture into Europe derive up to 44% of their ancestry from a population he called Basal Eurasian. Supposedly, this was related to the out of Africa populations, but let the Neanderthal populations found in all people today living outside of Africa. Which raises the question, could it have emerged in Africa before the out of Africa migrations instead? Some an important point I must bring up is that some indigenous Africans could be more closely related to the out of Africa peoples than would other indigenous Africans because out of Africa splintered off from these from the earlier Africans. For example, Northeast Africans and East Africans would be more closely related to out of Africa than West Africans, in large part because all people outside of Africa would have come from Northeast Africans. Now, now here's a graph showing the population substructure in Africa. As you can see, the earliest Africans to split away from the rest are Khoisan peoples from Southern Africa, such as the Kalahari Bushmen. Next are Central African foragers, the so-called Pygmies. And then you have West African people like Nigerians and Malians. And then East Africans, from which non-African people derive. That is to say, East Africans would be more closely related to non-African people than, than with the other African peoples because non-Africans are splinter off East Africans. So what is this basal Eurasian really? 
It could be Northeast African ancestry that entered Western Eurasia sometime before the Natufian culture developed in the Levant. This admixture would have been inherited by Neolithic farmers in the Middle East and then introduced into Europe alongside agriculture. The result? Mar Europeans have inherited almost one third of their ancestry from Northeast African migrations within the last 15,000 years. But that's not the end of the story, folks, for Africans would have continued to move into Western Eurasia even after the Neolithic. Skeletal remains from, from Roman era sites in Great Britain, such as Leicester and York, have shown African characteristics, one specimen being the famous Ivory Bengal lady. Another example, a skull find in Ephesus, Turkey, which has shown a mixture of African and European traits, may belong to the famous Cleopatra sister, Arsinoe, which might imply that Cleopatra, known from descending from a Macedonian dynasty, might have had some African ancestry. She would not have been pure Macedonian like a lot of people think. In, and to the right, you can see a reconstruction of Cleopatra based on this, not, on this knowledge. Another interesting information, Semitic languages may have entered the Middle East from Africa around 3800 BC. Semitic is a branch of a larger linguistic phylum known as Afroasiatic or Afrasian, which would have originated in Northeast Africa, as you know, as you can see on the map there. There is to corroborate this genetic evidence for African ancestry entering Armenian populations of the Caucasus, the Caucasus, you know, the area right, right, north, right north of Turkey and Iran that goes back to 3800 BC. Now, who would these African people have been? They would have been natives of northeastern Africa occupying the eastern Sahara and along the Red Sea coast. They would have probably spoken languages related to Proto-Afro-Asiatic. Very likely, it is people like these who contributed to the ancestry of the ancient Egyptians. Rock art these people left behind suggests they were dark-skinned or black, like most indigenous African people. In fact, the skin tones are similar to most of the Egyptian characters in ancient Egyptian art, as you can see from these pictures. And here's more of these pictures to, with rock art compared to ancient Egyptian art. As you can see, everyone's dark-skinned here. So, in conclusion, almost a third of modern Europeans' ancestry can be traced to migrations out of Africa into Western Eurasia within the last 15,000 years. These migrations would have been brought into Europe from the Middle East alongside agriculture. Africans continued to migrate into Western Eurasia after the Neolithic, you know, into Roman times and so forth. This shows us that waves of immigration into Europe from Africa or elsewhere are nothing new. And this is Brandon Pilcher signing off.